please give it up for Rachel Petzinger, everybody. <laughs> Rachel Petzinger. Jewish lady. <laughs> I actually just got back from studying in Berlin. Uh, the Germans treat World War II very differently than we Americans treat it. Uh, for example, I had this one professor, I took a 20th century German history course, and she not once mentioned World War II or Hitler. Here's what we studied. We skipped World War I, because why? And <laughs> Then we went right to the Weimar Republic. Then we skipped 1933 to 1945. <laughs> she said that Thomas Mann fled Germany to go on vacation. <laughs> uh, and then we went right to East Germany and the wall and 99 glove balloons. And that was it. <laughs> <laughs> to her credit, we briefly, briefly talked about the Nuremberg trials, but all she said were, there were some trials in Nuremberg, and that was all that happened. We don't need to study them. <laughs> uh, and like she was obviously avoiding talking about it. And I knew that she wasn't anti-Semitic because when I lived in bed I would see her at the same kosher supermarket. And so I like I wanted to see how far I could get with this. So I would like raise my hand in class and be, "Ich habe eine Frage." So I was reading this thing about. This place in Poland, uh, Boschwitz, am I saying that right? <laughs> <laughs> or I'd say May 8th, 1945. Does that date in German history mean anything? <laughs> like, I, I, I vaguely recall hearing about this guy, he killed his wife, then committed suicide, and then a bunch of people are like, well, what do we do now? <laughs> uh, yeah, then there are some Germans who, they, once they find out you're an American, they just try to guilt you as much as possible into feeling badly about how much the United States destroyed their country. Um, like I was, I was outside this store with one of my friends, we were speaking English, and this little kid comes up to us and points at whatever, and he goes, there was a coffee house there, but it is not there anymore because some country had to go and blow it up. <laughs> I was like, you are like two years old. <laughs> that is a great grasp on a second language. <laughs> I have this uh, pen pal, Heidi from Heidelberg. And uh, we, we chat online like twice a week, half in German, half in English. And we were talking about some pretty normal stuff the other day. I was saying like, I want to move to LA, I want to write movies, write for television. And out of all the movies in the entire world, she asked me if I've ever seen Schindler's List. And I say, yeah, it's a great movie. Um, a little sad. Uh, <laughs> not something I'd watch like, to relax on a Friday night, but it's a really good movie. And she goes, I think it's horrible what my people are doing to the Jews. I wish I could stop them. And I'm like, like Heidi, you know it's been over for a while, right? And she goes, yes, but the history, it follows you. Don't you think what my people have done is horrible? And like, I don't know what to say. Because growing up, I was always just taught, you don't ask Germans about their past because somewhere down the line, someone was a Nazi. <laughs> and, <laughs> and like, I don't want to just flat out insult her because I feel like saying, yeah, you guys kind of fucked up with that one. Like that would be kind of like blaming me for blowing up coffee shops. Like I have nothing to do with that. <laughs> So I handled that situation the way I handle most awkward situations. I just type back a frowny face. And <laughs> I also ran into a number of Germans who were just maybe a little too casual about World War II. Mm -hmm. I had this one professor, and she was great. Uh, I had a little bit of a straight girl crush on her. And I, I invited her out for drinks with one of my friends, one of my classmates. And so we're at the bar, and my classmate is looking around and he goes, you know, I haven't seen any Hasidic Jews in Berlin. And she just goes, oh, yeah, we got rid of all of them. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't want to, like, ruin the relationship, so I just go, 
Yeah, that, that is one way to look at it. <laughs> and she says, well, it's the 1940s, they've had a very tricky time in Germany. Now, I don't know if I would call the 1940s in Germany a tricky time. No. I would say, if a 12-year-old boy is to spend an entire summer reading The Call of the Wild and not realizing that Buck is a dog, that would be tricky. <laughs> But besides that, Berlin is a great city. So is New York. Thank you, guys. Woo!